Hello again. Hi, Karsten. Um, Hi, Bernard. Another day, another, another video. An, another day, another task. So, uh, yeah, we did the cluster verification. Now we are going to create the cluster, right? So that's another episode where I lean back and see you do the stuff. Um, so you have the magic scripts for creating yeah. the cluster. So first, we have different possibilities to create the cluster. Uh, we have the way uh, we do it now with PowerShell, mm -hmm. but we could also do it with a failover cluster manager from a different node. Okay. And there is there is a bit of a, of a um, pitfall yeah. that I fall in because I, my, um, my WAC machine where, that we have, we, see, we have seen this multiple mm -hmm. times. This is, is a, a Windows which, which server. Upper? 20? Yeah, this is Windows 2019, exactly. Oh, okay. So it's it's a Windows Server 2019. And if you do here with failover cluster manager, the creation of the Azure Stack HCI cluster, it will create a cluster on cluster level 10. Which and is 2019, right? This is 2019, Wait. exactly. And our Azure Stack HCI 22H2 is on cluster level, uh, level 11. Mm -hmm. Also, the storage level of the software-defined uh, storage part would also be um, 2019, server 2019, not server 2022. So this is can something you, can, I can, recently, can, I recently yeah. had the problem with, and I didn't know that before. So now I share it. Uh, your question. Yeah, so it, it, it is sort of logical if you think of it, right? So how should a failover cluster manager on a Windows 2019 know what the capabilities of a later version is. Exactly. However, um, I mean, you don't maybe don't think about it, but you know, even if you would do it wrong, can you update the cluster functional level in order to gain additional features? Yes, you can do that. Uh, there is a PowerShell uh, commandlet for that. You can uh, can mm. do both, uh, but you have to realize it because yeah. some features may not work as you expect or you don't have the capabilities right. in 2022 h2 maybe with uh, gpu partitioning that's rather new so if you are if you lack of some things that should work mm -hmm. uh, look at your cluster lab uh, and that's uh, and another your... reason yeah yeah sorry um, and that's no, another reason that that's um, you know that speaks in favor for doing this via PowerShell, right? Because exactly. Um, yeah. And if some of you would say do it with Windows Admin Center, Windows Admin Center is a nice PowerShell front end. It's not mm. always true, but most of the time it's true. So let's do right. this little script. What what are we doing here? We have our nodes. Yes, we have our cluster name, mm -hmm. and we have a cluster IP address. So I mm -hmm. will. Uh, Copy that, put it here. Right. And so have you do... pre-created your cluster name or cluster object already? I mean, are you doing this in organizational units to apply group policies on, or how do you usually do it? So that's, you don't have to create your uh, cluster computer uh, account. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the PowerShell would, would do that. But mm -hmm. in fact, here I have I have already one mm -hmm. and it is disabled. So let me go to my domain controller right, and show you that. But if you do that, it has to be disabled. Otherwise, yeah. uh, the commandlet would say, here you see it. The yeah. commandlet would say, no, uh, there is already a cluster object with the same name. Right. Uh, choose another name, right? Why have I done that? Uh, the reason for that is um, there are some things that you do in your cluster where the cluster object needs permissions on the OU. Right. And this is already here. So if I delete it, of course, I have to set the permissions again, but we will come to that uh, a little bit later. So cluster now let's updating, create the right? cluster. This is, is one thing, right? Yeah, uh, the cluster way updating is one thing. You're true. If you if you yeah. work with Hyper-V replica, you have a Hyper-V replica broker. Right. It's also a, um, a computer account that the cluster has to create, not the mm -hmm. not the user. Um, so and even if you do something different, like a scale out file server with storage basis direct, this is also. Uh, a, a computer account in the AD that the cluster creates. And okay. always when the cluster has to create a computer account, you need additional um, ad additional security rights on the OU. 
not the user has to have the rights. I'm domain admin, but, but the cluster has to do that. Yeah. So uh, the question was good. So if I wouldn't have a cluster account, it will create one. If there is already a cluster account that has to be disabled, it will use that one. So if you don't have the rights in your Active Directory, in larger companies, often the Active Directory team is separated from the virtualization administration team. So you have to ask your Active Directory uh, people maybe to pre-create an account, and that is also possible. So, but now let's come to the important part. Let's create the cluster. Mm -hmm. And I tell the new cluster command the nodes. They are in the, this array. Uh -huh. uh, I tell it the name. The name is also in the variable. And uh -huh. I give it an IP address because uh -huh. the cluster has to have its own IP address in the usually in the management network where also the nodes are. And you see, <laughs> this was very fast. So let's check it. We can, of course, use PowerShell and say uh, check cluster not check, get cluster, of course. And of course, there are some more options and only the names. So if you formatted list star, you see there is a cluster object with many, many options here. Yeah? Yeah. And we can also ask for the nodes, get cluster node. Here you see we have four nodes. It's a four node cluster and right. all nodes are up. And we can even add connect to cluster, we can even the, add the created cluster to failover cluster manager. Mm -hmm. Can you do me you a see? favor now, as we, you know, as we have said something like before regarding the cluster functional level, would you be, you know, so kind and run the cluster functional level uh, PowerShell? I think it's cluster functional. How it's fun. Yeah, I no, I'm taking uh, a U, F, U, I think it is. F, U, mm -hmm. no, yes. it isn't. Okay, let me, you know, get this one and. So we have, it's always, it's always good if we, if we struggle a bit online, so people <laughs> see we are not perfect. Yeah, yeah and now right. how would I check for the command? I, so this is a tip, I use get command and then I know that the name cluster should be in the commandlet. So I do get command star cluster star. So, and here we now have all the commandlets with cluster in it. And so, it should be some of those, Yes, I right? can, I, it is get cluster node supported version. Egg, there you okay. have. Something complete different. <laughs> Sorry for this. Uh... Get cluster node, mm -hmm. no. It, no, oh, you need to. I, I should. I should write get right. <laughs> so Not still a bit <laughs> early, right? Note. No. A note. Supported. supported version. So it's eleven. Yeah. And there is also the the version on the cluster. So I did that before. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do that somewhere here is also an eleven for us. Mm -hmm. I I assume. I think I I. There it is. So we can also say get yeah. okay get yep. cluster and then we also have the function level okay there are different ways to see it and uh, if you have a 10 here with an azure stack hci uh 22h2 you should uh raise how it. you erase your function level yeah okay i think that's enough for now, and we will see us in the next video, right? Mm -hmm.